In this video, I'm going to break down acne. I'm going to talk about what it is, what it's caused by, and how you can treat it. Acne affects around 85% of the population throughout their lifetime. It can be in your teenage years or it can persist into adulthood. It can show up out of the blue if you're pregnant. So my goal in this video is to make it as educational as possible so that if you have acne, you know what is going on with your skin and you can make informed skincare choices. Is acne I'm gonna read off a scientific definition first so acne is a disease of the pillow sebaceous unit that causes non-inflammatory lesions inflammatory lesions and various degrees of scarring so what this means is is that acne is a skin lesion so a wound or a mark and it can be inflammatory so involve your immune system or non-inflammatory so not involve your immune system and it can cause scarring and there's varying degrees of this and varying severities of this the most mild form of acne is called a comedone and so this is a white head or a black head and these form on the surface of your skin when dead skin cells mix with oil and it blocks a pore. And when you see on products something that's labeled as non-comedogenic, this is the type of acne that it's referring to. So it prevents the formation of comedones and so the blockages of your pores in your epidermis. A second type of acne are papules or pustules, and these are inflammatory. So papules are around five millimeters in size and they're just red inflamed bumps, whereas pustules are the same thing, but they just have pus. And so these are similar to comedones in that they're blocked pores, but they also involve an infection of P. acne bacteria. And this bacteria is naturally found on our skin, but sometimes it can overgrow or colonize a pore. And then this is where you get that type of acne. So a last type of acne, and it is the most severe form of acne, is nodular acne or cystic acne. And this again involves blocked pores and excess sebum and an infection from P. acne bacteria, but it spreads even further into the skin tissue and goes much deeper than the other two forms of acne. And so this is where you'll get bumps underneath of the skin that are about one centimeter in size and they can be nodular so there's no pus in them or if you have cystic acne they do have pus in them and they can be very large and very painful and very inflamed. So at a cellular level there are four key things that are happening that's contributing to the formation of acne. So one you get alteration to keratinization in your skin and what that means is you have abnormal skin shedding or an increase in skin shedding and these excess dead skin cells can clog your pores and contribute to acne number two you have a colonization or overgrowth of p acne bacteria again this is the acne that's already on your skin but sometimes it can over Three is that you'll have excess sebum production, and this is largely caused from your hormones, so your androgens. And so these will throw your sebum production out of whack and in many cases make your skin very oily. And the last thing that's happening is you're having innate and adaptive immune responses. So in short, this just means that you're having inflammatory reactions to the clogged pores and the acne in your skin. And this is what's making your skin really sore and really red. So apart from those cellular mechanisms, there's external factors that are going to cause acne as well. So diet has been linked to acne, and in particular, dairy and chocolate has been extensively linked to acne. Um, again, your hormones, if you're having a hormonal imbalance, maybe it's from stress, maybe it's from an underlying endocrine disorder like PCOS, or maybe it's puberty that can contribute to acne. Um, lack of sleep, lack of water, your hygiene. So if you have a really dirty phone and you're putting it on your face or a dirty pillow or dirty makeup brushes, this can clog your pores. So there's an array of things that can cause acne. So really bad skincare can unfortunately cause acne. And so this can be harsh cleansers that's completely throwing off your skin 
or just serums and moisturizers that are so clogging so it doesn't matter who you are even if you normally don't suffer from acne this skincare directly causes blocked pores and an overgrowth of acne bacteria <music> When looking to treat acne, there's actually an array of things you can do because everyone's skin type is different, skin condition is different, the types of acne you're going to have are different, your diet, lifestyle, sleep, where you're living, it's all different. So I'm going to give you the best tips, but you really need to find something individual that works for you. And this is also why finding a therapist you trust can be so important. But, okay, so internally you need to target acne and this is really important if you have nodular or cystic acne, so very severe acne, you need to look inside first. So often this will involve balancing your hormones. And so to do this, you can visit a nutritionist to balance your hormones. You can visit a doctor and be prescribed pharmaceuticals, but you can also take something called Skin Acumax. And this has been so effective for so many people because it's a nutritional supplement, but it actually does help balance your hormones. So not only does it target the four key cellular processes that are contributing to acne, but it's really, really unique because it balances hormones in a natural way without all of the side effects of many pharmaceuticals. So if you're looking to target your acne internally, I really would recommend this. Another thing that you can do just to help balance your acne from an internal perspective is look at your diet because if you have an allergy to dairy and you don't know you have it it could be causing these huge cysts on your skin and making such a small change in your diet like cutting out dairy will make all the difference also balancing your stress is something you can do because this will balance hormones and just making sure you're sleeping and getting proper nutrients in your diet and drinking enough water can really really make a difference when you're battling acne <music> also need to target your acne externally so topically and one of the biggest mistakes people make is not using skincare that's designed for acne so skincare that contains active ingredients that are specifically designed to target and prevent acne so it's really important that you make sure you're using the right products and I'm gonna give you an overview of some of the best ingredients so First one would be retinoids, and these are vitamin A derivatives, and these stimulate cell renewal, so they help regulate your skin shedding and prevent any comedones from forming, and it's also anti-inflammatory. Some of the best product recommendations that contain vitamin A or retinoids are Indeed Labs Retinol Reface because it's really good for sensitive skins, and also the Osmosis Clarify blemish retinal serum because it uses liposomal delivery so it's able to carry the vitamin A deeper into your skin and target acne from a deeper level. Another anti-acne ingredient that's really popular and very very effective is salicylic acid and this is really popular because it's anti-inflammatory but it also helps control excess skin shedding so it helps your pores to never become clogged really and some of the best products containing salicylic acid are the PCA acne gel or indeed labs clarify oil because not only do these contain salicylic acid but they don't over dry your skin. The last ingredient that's really effective to treat acne and that I really would recommend are alpha hydroxy acids so these are chemical exfoliants so glycolic acid or lactic acid and these help again with regulating excess skin shedding because they remove dead skin cells from the top of your skin's surface but glycolic acid also kills acne bacteria. And so some of the best products for these are actually from Jan Marini. And she has a bioglycolic face cream or a bioclear lotion which contain glycolic acid. So having a skincare routine that's regular and consistent at home is so important if you have acne. But another thing that I really, really cannot recommend enough is a facial treatment. And so these treatments speed up your results and they're designed to be had every three to four weeks and so an example of a treatment that i would really recommend is a chemical peel a moderate one with glycolic acid and these are really effective because they exfoliate your skin so they release any acne they also reduce sebum production they can reduce your pore size they're antibacterial they're anti-inflammatory and they really really help with scarring so i cannot recommend these enough <music> Ok, 
Okay, so that's it for today's video. I really, really hope it was helpful. I tried to give you, you know, the best information and scientifically backed information. If you have acne, I really would recommend speaking to a specialist or a therapist because you could have a couple different types of acne and your skin type and your lifestyle is so unique to you. So you really need to find a unique solution that works for you. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or always you can connect with us on Instagram. It's at Dermoiskin or you can head over to our shop. And thank you very much for watching.